All right, friends, I hope everybody's stirred up today. I hope everybody's full of vision, full of just destiny, dreams, ready to go for the things of the Lord. I want to talk to you just real plain about something today that I really feel could help a whole lot of people. You know, whenever we do different videos and, and we, we, I talk to different people on a regular basis, you know, everybody's full of dreams, vision, and, and everybody always gets super excited about what they're going to do for the Lord. And, and they really feel that they, they have a, you know, like a calling. And when I talk to people, and so many people talk with great passion about the Lord and the dreams that they have for life, the, the problem that a lot of people have after that point is this right here. It is the lack of courage. And I'm here to tell you, I want to talk to you today about courage. You know, to do anything new in life, to go further than anybody else in your family has gone, to, to, to break comfort zones, anything like that, you've got to be able to do one thing. You, you've got to have courage to break strongholds. And so many times after our, our videos, we have an apostolic network and people call me and message me and email me. They always talk about their ideas for business, ministry, and all these things. But at the end of their conversation, they lose their excitement, they lose their zeal, and then all of a sudden, they realize that they have to face a giant, that there is some type of comfort zone that they have to defeat, that they got to get out of the complacency, that they will actually go further than, than anybody else has ever gone before in, in their family, that, that, it, that they will have to go further than anybody else has ever gone in their industry or their business. You know, and, and this is what I want to talk about today. Having courage is hard for a lot of people, but once you experience winning, once you experience just always going further, always thriving in life, what does the word thrive actually mean? The word thrive means developing well. Everybody has a goal. Everybody has a vision. But how are you moving forward with courage to meet your goal? There's so many people that I've seen over the years in ministry, they would always go up to, to the same height, to the same level, just to back up because they don't want to go forward. I want to talk to some people today that are going to gain some courage by the Holy Spirit. They're going to gain courage. They're going to take a deep breath, and they're going to say, I know that what I'm about to do is going to be hard. I know it's going to take some work, but I'm going to have courage by Holy Spirit to do everything God has called me to do. I am going to do every prophetic word that has ever been spoken over my life. And the reason that I believe this video is going to be so valuable for so many people is because I see so many people who start, let's say like uh, that they launch a church and I'm running alongside them. When they hit their first huge obstacle, they want to back up. If it was easy, listen, if it was easy, everybody would do it. You know, I help people start businesses. When they start their new business, when they hit their first snag, their first huge roadblock, they want to stop. I'm like, no, no, no. You're not going to stop. You're going to keep going forward. You, you got to keep moving in to the things that God has called you to. When God calls you into something, it's usually a new realm of possibilities and impossibilities that you're going to have to step in. I know whenever my wife and I launched a church, I knew it wouldn't be easy, but you know what? We've stayed the course. When my wife and I launched our Roar Apostolic Network, you know, we we jumped into that. There was times it was hard, but we kept moving. When my wife and I launched our health coaching business, we jumped in. That thing is going pretty good, and there was a few times we had a few little times where things weren't moving forward, but that thing has exploded for us and blessed us in numerous ways. And so what you got to understand is it takes courage to do something new. It takes courage to think out of the box. One of the reasons you got to have courage by the Holy Spirit is this right here. Your family members, your, your friends, people that you're close to, if they're not big thinkers, they're, they're not going to applaud you. They're not going to applaud you when you're trying to champion a cause. To, to do something out of the the normality of life. A lot of people will look at you strange, but you know what? They may not be a dreamer. They're not the ones that got the prophetic vision from the Lord. They're not the one that had the dream from God at 2 a.m. that kept you up the rest of the night because you were full of zeal and excitement over something. It takes courage to change. You know, I, I was talking to some, some ex-addicts the other day, and 
and and and these are these are are guys in their forties and fifties. They're like, man, I've been an addict for twenty, thirty years. I said, you know what? It takes courage to change, but I believe in you. You're going to be able to do this, and so they are ready to to have the courage to step past that. You know, I, I know people that have been in poverty their whole life, but they have dreams, and, and I tell them, the dreams from God that you have, they will not survive in poverty. You hear me? Your dreams that God has given you will not survive in poverty. you got to have courage to get out of that. A lot of you have been held back by a limited mindset. It takes courage to break mindset. It takes courage to break the current mindset that you're in. But this is why this video is so important. When you have courage and you overcome an obstacle, the next obstacle is so easy. I remember last year at my kids' district uh, junior high track meet, I was talking to my, my daughters, and, 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 and the young men were about to run the hurdles, and one of my daughters was like, whoo, those hurdles are high. I couldn't jump over one of those. I said, hey, them young men are about to jump over 10. And, and you saw those young guys, that they would size up that first hurdle. They would do their practice run. They would look at that first hurdle. They didn't look at the seventh hurdle. They didn't look at the ninth hurdle, and they didn't even look at the tenth hurdle. They were looking at that first hurdle. Why? Because they knew that if they got over that first hurdle and they got in the flow and they got into stride, the second hurdle, the fifth, the eighth, and the tenth would be no problem. You know, in, in hurdle running, the most uh, tragedies you see are at the first hurdle. You know, it's when people do the stutter step. It's, but if they get over that first hurdle, they're going to run. They're going to be able to flow. And so what I want to tell you today I'm telling you, my friends, it's going to take some courage. People call me all the time. They say, Apostle Jojo, man, I, I got a vision. They tell me their vision. Well, then I talk to them six months later. They got the same vision. They haven't acted upon it. But the people that are running after the things of God, they're constantly telling me the hurdles are jumping over. They're constantly telling me how they've had to have courage to conquer their mountain. To, to come through just different things. that they, they landed in a pothole, but they came out. It takes courage to break cycles. It takes courage to get out of toxic relationships. It takes courage to step out of a good paying job with benefits, to step out into the unknown and launch a business. You know, it took courage for my wife. Let me tell you a story. Three years ago, I stepped out of, of a good church where my cousin was the pastor. I stepped out launched Roar Apostolic Network, stepped out um, some time later and, and started uh, Roar Church, Texarkana. I stepped out, and when I did, then I started launching uh, our health coaching business. I started launching our YouTube channel. You know, now I had that job working for my cousin at, at a good church. I was blessed during that time frame. During that same time frame, my wife worked at a school, had a very good job working for a good school, we were blessed. Well, 18 months ago, she stepped out of her job. It took courage for her not to get that paycheck and those benefits anymore. It took courage for me three years ago to step out of that church. Let me tell you something. Today, today, I make five times more money than I did three years ago. It took, it took courage for me to do that. You got to understand, it takes courage to do that. My wife with the health coaching business makes more than she did 18 months ago. But we didn't know what we were going to do, but it took courage to step out. The first time I got ready, I remember the first time I was in a service to lay hands on the sick. You know what happened? It took courage, a lot of courage for me to pray, and I didn't see anything. Second time, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see anything. Third time, I didn't see anything. And it was harder to build that courage up. But I remember one night I was, I was in an August camp meeting in Texas, 104 degrees. I got ready to preach. And right before I did, the Lord said, there's a man in a wheelchair that's going to walk before you preach. I jumped down off the stage. Hilarious story, if you'll know the whole story. It was in a church that was not a spirit-filled church. God told me I had to preach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So I was already like, oh, Lord, it's going to take courage. Even funnier than that, it was my mother-in-law and my grandmother-in-law's first time to ever hear me preach, 104 degrees, Texas heat, 
and I was going to preach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues in, in a non-speaking in tongues church. But then God told me to lay hands on a man and make him get, have him get up and walk out of a wheelchair. It took courage for all of that. The man walked, 35 teenagers got filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Two nights later, 28 adults got filled in that same church with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues. And I saw the guy recently, I'm talking, this was 20 years ago, y'all. I saw him in a store and he started running in place in the store and said, Jojo, remember that night? I'm like, yeah, man, what you doing? What you doing here? He said, I'm still healed. It took courage to step out and do that. It took courage for me to ask my wife, out on a date, and then to marry me. I can see. I look in the, first time I saw my wife at a prayer meeting, I ran in the, bap, the bathroom and looked at myself in the mirror, and when she walked in, God said, that's your wife? I, I ran into to the bathroom, and I looked at myself in the mirror, and I said, God, how are you going to pull this one off? I know what I look like. I know what she's looking like. I know who she is, Lord. Um, how are you going to pull this off? That whole part of the Red Sea is not that big of a deal compared to if you can pull this one off. See that ring, y'all? He pulled it off, but it took courage for me to talk to her. You know, anything you do in life is going to take courage. People buying their first house, it takes courage to do that. It takes courage to witness to somebody that you know doesn't even like you. It takes courage to go up and ask somebody that you don't even know publicly, can I pray for you? I've had people, I've had people that, that I've walked up to in public, can I pray for you and went on a rage against me. The next person I prayed for got healed publicly or accepted Jesus publicly right there in the middle of a restaurant, right there in the middle of Walmart. It takes courage to do this. The reason I'm doing this video, one, I was prompted by the Holy Spirit, but two, so many people contact me and I start walking with them with their health, walking with them in our apostolic network, and then they hit a roadblock and they want to quit. They do not have the courage to push through. I had somebody recently called me weeping just in so much pain. So they got on our health program. They want to lose 80 to 100 pounds. And then the first two weeks, they lost 15 pounds. I said, how do you feel? I've gained energy. My knees aren't hurting as bad. My hips aren't hurting as bad. I'm feeling better. They stopped. I said, why did you stop? You didn't hit your goal. They said, well, some people came against me. Oh, you're getting too thin. You're this, you're that. And all of a sudden, they shrunk back. They didn't have courage to move forward. I see people who, who started a home group with six people, 10 people, 12 people, 15 people, 20 people. Then they stopped. I said, why did you stop? Well, some churches came against me in my region because they thought that I was moving in on their people. I said, excuse me, none of them died for those people. Jesus Christ died for those people. Those are his people. You get that, that group and you start it back up. It takes courage to come against the religious systems of this day to see the kingdom of God manifest. The scriptures say, your kingdom come, your will be done. That's God's kingdom, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Your kingdom come where? To earth, on earth as it is in heaven. We haven't fully seen the kingdom manifested. So every time we do that and we preach and teach the apostolic prophetic kingdom, religious Pharisees will come against them. Who fought Jesus the worst? Was it the religious people or, or the worldly people? The religious people. Even in scriptures, it said at one point that the, that, that, that the religious cultures from Jerusalem, the Pharisees, the religious people, sent the key scholars from Jerusalem to come against Jesus. They sent the head people in the religious system. People in our city, the head religious leaders, have came against me when we started preaching, teaching kingdom, and started seeing people healed. It took courage for my wife and I to keep going. But here's the deal. I know my why. I know why I do everything that I do. I keep moving forward in the things that God has called me to do. So I, I want to help you today. I want to encourage you. Take courage in what God has called you to do and go for it. I know it's hard. I know it's bad. You know, people call me all the time and, 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 and they want to start something. They want to start a ministry. They want to start a, a prayer ministry. They want to start a home group ministry. They, they want to break out of a religious system. They want to break out of a rut. They want to quit their job. They want to leave their job. They feel God's leading them. You know, listen to me. It takes courage to follow the Holy Spirit. But what does Isaiah 43, 19 say? Will I not tell you before I do something? Will I not let you know, my people? I will let you know 
Then he goes on to say that I want you to make a river in a desert. First of all, you don't see rivers in deserts. Or do you? You're looking through the natural, you're looking through the kingdom. You, you don't see kingdom churches in most cities, but you're about to. Then it goes on to say that I will make a path through a wilderness. You look at a wilderness, you look at the forest, you don't see a path unless somebody makes it. God wants you to take courage. God wants you to take courage and do the things that you don't see in the natural, but you've seen in your spirit. I know, guys, usually I'm all purpose and destiny and, and let's fast and pray, and, and I'm super excited. I am excited, but I'm telling you, some of you need to understand this. You've got to move forward today in what God has called you to do. I've had some people recently call me scared to death, scared to death, grown adults crying, an emotional wreck. I'm laughing at them, and I'm like, you, you, you finally stepped through the door. They were Matthew 7 and 7 knocking, and when God opened the door they've been waiting on and they got their foot in the door, the favor and the blessing of God overwhelmed them. And then, oh yeah, the criticism of the enemy. Do you not think that the enemy is going to oppose you for everything that God has for you? Of course. They were overwhelmed by the opposition but they were also overwhelmed by the favor and the blessing of God. Remember, the word says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I don't care how much opposition you come against. You're going to keep going. My wife calls me a freight train. In my worst days, physically feeling the worst, financially feeling the worst, whatever things were, when our finances were, were, were rough at a certain point in our life, they ain't like that now. You see, that they ain't like that now. Why? Because I went through some hard ways. You know what? When you make a path in a wilderness, the generation behind you can come on your path and not even worry about it. They can go drink from the river and not even worry about it. They didn't build the river, but they can go drink from the river. They can swim in the river. You know, you got to understand that you're building for somebody else. Why are you going through hardship right now? Why do you need courage? It's not for you. Get your mind off yourself. My courage, my courage is, is for the lady that gave me this ring right here. My courage are the three children that she gave me. My courage is for Roar Church, Texarkana. I love you people. My courage is for the Roar Apostolic family. I love our Roar Apostolic family. My courage is for everybody that I am their health coach. I'm telling you, that's who I have courage for. Get your mind off of yourself. Get it on your spouse. You may not even know your spouse yet. Get it on your kids. Get it on the people around you. Get your mind set on what God has called you to do for them, and you'll have courage. You will have courage. Man, I, I remember one night we was at a, at a coffee shop, and, and there was a, a, a couple, and, and this guy, he was a little guy. He was a little guy. He seemed sweet, but all of a sudden, this big dude kind of bowed up and said something. This little old dude jumped up in front of his, his wife, and he Fold out his chest, and, and that guy looked at him and said, whoa, easy, man. I just, you know, just kind of said something. But all of a sudden, that guy, that little guy, took courage against this big old dude because that guy said something smart aleck to his wife. Just courage. Who do you have courage for? Who are you going to stick your neck out for? Who are you going to help? Who are you going to go on a fast for? Come on. We got to have courage for everybody around us, okay? You see, when you're a small thinker, you only think of yourself. I am so glad that my Jesus had courage to do what he did on earth. He came against the religious system. He came against the Pharisees, the Sadducees, everybody who sees. He came against everybody for, for the kingdom of God. And you know, they just didn't hang my Jesus on a tree. They didn't just hang him on a cross. They beat him. And then he took courage to keep moving forward. They beat him and said, renounce what you're saying. He said, no. Then, then they made him carry the cross and be humiliated. He took courage for you and I. Take courage today. I feel this so strong. Listen to me, please. YouTube, Facebook, listen to me. Your courage right now can change your marriage. I feel, some, I feel this from the Lord. Some people are watching this right now, and y'all have already said the nasty D word. 
I'm not even going to say it. You know what I'm talking about. I rebuke that word over you in the name of Jesus. I tell you what else I rebuke. Every, every doctor report, fight that. Fight it in prayer and fight it with natural causes. Fight it. I don't care what they said about your kid. Fight it. Take some courage in prayer. Go to prayer. The Bible says we go to the throne room with boldness. When I pray for my kids, I, st mm -hmm. I will get in a prayer room. I will fight with my words. I will make declarations and decrees. Have courage for other people. If you see something in your city, you know, there's people that I sow money to in my city. You know, I, there's people that, that have ministries for widows, for orphanages, for the homeless. They found a cause. They took courage and, and to do something. Listen, stand for something for once in your life. Get you a backbone and do something. You know, my, my wife and I, we, we love helping people. We've had some people recently join our apostolic network. They're like, I don't, I, I, I don't have much. I really can't sow a whole lot. I really can't even sow. I'm like, did I? I don't care. They say, well, um, I only got one lady. Say, I only got six people in my church. I'm like, right now, what's your vision? Oh, I got a big vision. I said, good, I do too. I'll help you get there quick. And so you got, you got to have courage. And if people don't have courage, why don't you give them a little bit of yours? Sometimes you got to help people have courage. You got to look at people and say, there's more in you than you see. There's so much more inside of you. You know, being a health coach, man, I've had, I've had a lot of people, I've had pastors come against me say, how can you do that? I said, well, because I tell you three things. The Bible says we're spirit, we're soul, and we're body. I can't see your spirit and I can't see your soul, but you tell me how spiritual you are, but you're 100 pounds overweight. How you do anything is how you do everything. Just saying. It takes courage to tell somebody who's 80 pounds overweight, you can do this. You can regain your life. You can regain your health. I'm telling you, you, you got to take courage. You know why it's hard to do that? I'll be vulnerable with you because I get a whole lot more no's than I do yeses. And people, they just don't say no. They, they slice you. They dash you. Well, they don't know that a brother just put on 32s. They don't know that for the first time in 20 years, I put on 32s. They also don't understand first time in 20 years, this dude right here is under 200 pounds. Okay. I'll tell you, they also didn't see the check I deposited last month doing it, this providing for my family. They also don't see how much money I sold into ministries last month straight from the health coaching business. See, people always talk about the money, but, but, but nobody ever asks you how much you sow. They're thinking out of their filter. Let me tell you something. If you want to do something in life, you've got to break through other people's filters and opinions of you. Is that making sense to anybody today? I hope y'all got this. I love y'all. God bless you. Listen to me. Take courage and do something with your life for once. Go for it. All in. You, you know why I wouldn't be a good poker player? This is why I would not be a good poker player. The first hand they dealt me, I wouldn't even look at my cards. I'd get all my chips and say, I'm all in. I wouldn't even look at them. Because I don't look at the day that I've been dealt. When I wake up every morning, after I spend my time with God, I clap my hands real loud. And in my house, I say, today's going to be a great day. It may be Texas 100 degrees, or it may be 30 degrees. It may be raining. It may be sleeting. It may, I don't know what it is. But I'm going to have a great day every day of my life. Why? Because I've learned when I take courage, I am more than a conqueror. That's what the good book says, y'all. If the, if the Bible says that I can have what I ask for and I pray for a little Ephesians 3.20 on you, I'm going to have it. Take some courage and go change the world around you.